Well, good morning. If you are visiting or watching online for the first time, welcome. It's great to have you here. My name is Paul, and I lead the team that oversees New Life Community Church. <laughs> Last week, we began to look at the vision we are carrying together as a local church family. And that vision is to see many people's lives transformed by Jesus, to be a local church that pioneers and helps establish new communities of believers, and to provide love and support for those who struggle with life's challenges. Vision is about where we are going, our destination, what we are aiming for. And our vision statements reflect what we believe God has commanded and called us to do together as a church family. If vision is about where we are going, mission is about how we're going to do it, the steps we're going to take to fulfill that vision. And last week, we took some time to unpack that first statement regarding our vision as a local church family, which was to see many people's lives transformed by Jesus. I'm just going to take a moment to up this. I'm small, but I'm, I'm not that small. So I'm just going to pop it up a little bit. Today, we're looking at number two. The vision of New Life Community Church is to be a local church that pioneers and helps establish new communities of believers. So we're going to start by looking at that area of pioneering church. I believe that pioneering spirit can be helpfully summed up by quoting the great starship captain of the USS Enterprise. To boldly go where no one has gone before. The dictionary puts this exploration of unknown territory being the first to pave the way to set foot on the land as point number one when defining the word pioneer. It starts with land. So let's do the same. Good morning, mate. As a church family, through faith and prayer, God called a community of believers to begin meeting here together in Falling Bridge 15 years ago with a heart to see many people's lives transformed by Jesus. Whilst that transforming work and the, the role of the church family here is far from done, we have learned over the years that the impact of this church family is like a cup that is full and runs over and is to spill out to the neighbouring villages and towns surrounding us. And to clarify that, I would like to say it's, it's more than just being a blessing, but actually concerns the establishing of new cups to be filled, new cups to be running over and more blessing to impact their surrounding areas. Jesus has commissioned his church, us as his church, to make disciples of all nations and to do so by going into all of the world to proclaim the gospel. So it should be of no surprise that although we love being church here, we are not settled or satisfied by that alone. Part of the love that we have for this community is born out of the passion to see this community transformed. And in addition, we believe God is giving us new communities to be passionate about. To boldly go is to go with courage. But the courage of the church should feel different to any other courage the rest of the world might experience. In the book of Joshua chapter 1, God speaks to Joshua and says, Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Here, in this situation, a leadership baton has been handed over from Moses, who has now died, to Joshua. Joshua is Moses' appointed successor, and he is 
to continue the ongoing mission to go therefore and get on board with what God is doing. God is leading Israel into the land that he has historically promised them and they are about to cross the Jordan River into that land. This is a huge moment for Israel and a huge moment for the leadership of Joshua. Be strong and courageous is mentioned four times in what is a very short opening chapter. So this leads me to think that quite naturally Joshua would have been a little bit nervous about the next mission steps. However, it does not deter him in continuing to lead the people toward the vision, the destination God has given them. The the key affirming factor really in Joshua's courage was God being with them. We can have courage to do lots of things in this life. But when it is the church getting on board with what God is doing, that courage is underpinned by God's presence going before them and being with them. As we see in the book of Joshua, to boldly go with courage into new lands is not going to be without its battles. For Israel, when they crossed the river, it was the city of Jericho initially. In the New Testament, when the apostle Paul courageously pioneered to where the gospel had never been preached before, he encountered battles. He suffered. The church suffered, but that did not prevent God from what he was doing. And it did not deter Paul from continuing to fulfill the mission that God, the vision that God has set before him. Dear church, all of you are here, of you who are here, and those of you who are listening, those who are watching. As an eldership team, we believe we have a mandate from God to explore new lands, new territories, to boldly go, <laughs> maybe not necessarily where no man has gone before, but certainly to land that may be new for us new communities for us to get passionate about, new places where we want to see many people's lives transformed by Jesus. And we are to have courage in doing this. Not an earthly courage, something that merely reflects the strength to do something in light of adversity, but a courage that is underpinned by the certainty of God being with us and going before us. A courage that comes with the faith that we are hearing from God and are on board with what God is doing. A courage that says, despite our weakness and fear, we will trust in God's strength and commitment. So I guess, what does that, what does that mean for us as a local church family? What does that look like for us to put that into practice? Well, I'm going to look at this in two parts, local impact and global impact. So we'll start with local. Through God's word, through prayer and through prophetic words given over the church, we have felt, I would say, a permission and a burden to start exploring the lands, particularly the village of Downton. And if you don't know, Downton is a 10 to 15 minute drive north of here towards Salisbury, which in, you know, in rural UK life, that's, you know, that's hours and days away, isn't it? <clears throat> it's been a while since its last census, but the population is estimated around 3,000, not including the surrounding areas. So, of course, some of you will know Downton well because you've travelled from there today. This has now been on, I think, at, on our hearts for a while, but most recently affirmed through that historical account of Jonathan and his armor bearer. If anyone recalls that story, this is where Jonathan decides to go and take a peek at the Philistine garrison. The garrison is where like a group of soldiers are stationed and the Philistines are like the top enemy to Jonathan and the people of Israel. Lucky for his armor bearer, he gets to go as well. And on approach, Jonathan says, come, let's go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised, it may be 
maybe, that the Lord will work for us. In other words, let's gather, go over there, give a little wave to the enemy, and see if the Lord is with us or not. You know, it's here that exploration becomes more intentional. They have to find out. And that's where we feel that we are at as an eldership team. We need to be more intentional about finding out. So with that in mind, and there will be more details to follow as we come along. As of September, we're going to be having a life group established that is intentionally concerned with Downton, made up of some people who are geographically located there, that make common sense, and with people who are, actually have a heart just to be on board with what God is doing and how he's leading us as a church family. Our next step of intentionality is to see what work of service we could see established in Downton, whether that's an alpha or a cap life skills or a children's work. Either way, it will begin with us stepping out in faith with something. And so with all of that in mind, I would like to ask you to be praying for us. And if you feel that you have some word of wisdom, of encouragement, Regarding this exploration, we would we'd love to hear from you. There is an existing church presence there in Downton, and that would be my responsibility to connect with those guys and see how they're all doing. But like Terry Virgo says, there are no well-worn paths. And what we are doing by exploring the land is actually just trying to faithfully respond to God's leadership over us. And we'll see what happens. So that's local impact. Let's, let's touch briefly on global impact, shall we? <clears throat> so Christ has given his church that mandate to go into all the world. So of course, global impact of this church family is not like off our radar. <clears throat> you only have to look at what Jesus can do with five loaves and two fish to know that he can take the little that we have to offer and use it to bless thousands. In addition to that, we also have had a prophetic word spoken regarding the global impact of this local church family. Which at this stage, I think as an eldership team, as a church, I'm not sure we need to actually do anything with that. It's just mainly, uh, and I think mainly because I'm, we're not completely sure what to do with that. However, what we are certain about is that we're having this in mind. We are aware of it. God is going to use us as a church family to have global impact. Of that I have confidence in. And it may mean that we do nothing more than what we're doing exactly at the moment. But to, I do think, to me, it feels like a greater encouragement or an exhortation to just get on and do the things we are most certain of. With humility, with conviction, with confidence, with courage, and with a heart of excellence that seeks to bring glory to our God. So church family, I, I think that we should be greatly humbled and encouraged by these things. We are on mission together. And what we are going to do is going to have both local and global impact to the glory of God. Amen? Amen. So that's pioneering regarding exploration of the land. Let's look a little bit further at the definition of pioneer so the pioneer also means to be the first or among the first in enterprise or development meaning that as a church family we aspire to be forerunners in effective ways of doing things in the first world war trench warfare resulted in thousands of soldiers being killed without any kind of territorial gains for either side involved with one army in trenches on one side and the other army in trenches on the other side each side would literally just cancel each other out at huge cost to human life and this was done over this land that stood in the middle known as we would known as uh, no man's land if one side was to press on and gain territory, a solution was required. And it is because of this very issue and the cost of lives, the stalemates, the inability for the military to press forward and gain ground that 
Winston Churchill commissioned British engineers and fought for the need for investment into new solutions that would overcome the, the trench war. Speaking of solutions, thanks, Joe. I commission you to make that stand stay there. <laughs> Not by using a bin, mate. No, no, I'm joking, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, okay, good. <clears throat> so Churchill commissioned British engineers and fought for the need for investment into new solutions that would overcome this trench warfare challenge. The result was the creation of a vehicle that could successfully navigate and overcome such terrain, aptly codenamed tank. We are creative beings made in the image of our creator God. And this is reason enough that as a church family, we should be inspired to be entrepreneurial, to be creative, to be pioneers in the way that we go about fulfilling the vision that God has given us. Now, what I'm not talking about here is amending theological positions just to help us fit in with the direction the world is going. No, I'm talking about using our theological foundations to inspire our creativity and enable us as a church family to fulfill the vision that God has given us. Groundbreaking, pioneering stuff is happening all the time across the world. And when I see this, I just see mankind in the image of God reflecting the goodness of God. But how much then more so should the church, those made in the image of God and redeemed by God, be forerunners and leaders in pioneering new things and new ways of doing things. So I just want to highlight one of the ways that we feel as a church family that we've been able to do that, really. And bearing in mind our rural context, one of the things that we have put much consideration into is just how do we do church in a rural community? How does that differ from the way that we might find that happening in a city context? How do we outwork the vision that God has given us within the context that we are in? It wasn't too long ago that God spoke to us prophetically about having visibility in the high street. Now, it's one thing to gain a building in a good location. It's another thing to successfully outwork the life of the church and its vision through how it operates. And that is where God has given to his church great gifts of people people with an entrepreneurial drive combined with a passion for his church so i do just want i do want to take this moment to honor the people that god has given us and i certainly know that this this is not exclusive to the branch which is our premises on the high street we have many gifts of people and New Life Community Church, but the branch certainly is an example of a way that we've been able to pioneer as a local church family. Not just by replicating an existing practice, but by looking to serve the vision of the church, the context and the community in which we live. These guys, particularly by God's grace, have managed to breathe a great deal of life into a building to be used to the glory of God. So, Ha. If they're here, I'd like you to stand. Joe and Nikki, I just want to kind of pick you guys up. Nikki is the branch manager. Don't have to do anything more than that, but Nikki is the branch manager. And I do want to honor Joe as well, because she has also had a significant hand in supporting and enabling the work that's happened in the branch. And I would like us yes. as a church family to honor these guys by just, uh, we can clap, we can clap. Yes, let's do that. It's good to honour what God is doing. It's good to honour those that God has given us with great gifts across the church family. And, you know, in this case, what we're highlighting is just one of the ways that we have been able to, I think, uniquely pioneer in a local rural context by God's grace. What we have managed to establish through the work of the church and the branch really has opened the door for us to consider then, what can we do then in other 
in our and other local communities. If we can do this, this is not just where we fall short. This is it. This is not just it. We've got more. God's got more for us to do, more for us to consider, more for us to pioneer into. So this really sets the expectation, the bar, the tone, and the permission to consider how we can pioneer in all types of church life, not disrupting our theological foundation, but by using those theological foundations, our convictions to inspire our creativity. So a final note then, the vision of New Life Community Church is to be a local church that pioneers and helps establish new communities of believers. Establish new communities of believers. This is an important one because like seeing many people's lives transformed by Jesus, we have a commitment not just to see people cross the line of faith, but journey with them so that they grow in their faith and their knowledge of God. This is what discipleship is. To establish new communities of believers is not just about paving the way through pioneering, but a commitment that says we are in it for the long haul. When the Apostle Paul pioneered by bringing the gospel into new territory, he boldly went with courage in response to God's leadership. And you know, he invested time and energy into each place, gathering believers for a year or maybe a couple of years before he then looked to pioneer elsewhere. However, Paul didn't just leave it there. To establish that community, he made sure that through his team, elders were appointed to oversee and support the ongoing life of the church in each area. Ongoing life and fruitfulness was Paul's concern, and that should be our concern as well. We want to see many people's lives transformed by Jesus, to pioneer and pave the way through God's leadership over land and through the activity of the church in order to establish new communities of believers, meaning we don't just move on, we commit to the ongoing life and fruitfulness of each established gathering of believers. How do we respond to such things? As we, as we explore and we become more intentional about, for example, Downton, as we look to pioneer and establish, as we seek to honour God through the vision he has given us, we will continuously need God's wisdom, his counsel, his comfort, his confirmation, the signs of his favour and the support of his people. When Jonathan makes the call to head toward the Philistine garrison, his armour bearer responds by saying this, do all that is in your heart. Do as you wish. Behold, I am with you, heart and soul. The armour bearer is knitted heart and soul to the leadership of Jonathan. And as an eldership team, we view that as another sign of God's favour, the local church family responding in such a way to church leadership by you guys saying, we are with you heart and soul. Such support is not, to, is not to inflate our egos, but to confirm what God is doing in our hearts and how he is leading us as a church family. So, if you are willing, I would like to call you to respond as a sign of commitment to this second vision statement of the church. That vision of New Life Community Church to be a local church that pioneers and helps establish new communities of believers. So if you are new or have recently connected to New Life Community Church here, please, I'm just going to say, don't feel obliged to respond in the way that we are asking. Okay, please actually just take this as an opportunity to know us a little bit more as a church family. But for all of you other guys, if you feel knitted, and that's important, knitted heart and soul to this vision statement and the direction of the church family, I would like you to stand together.
it's an important moment because it's a commitment not to say that we are just with you, but it's a commitment to say we're willing to boldly go. It's a commitment to say, I'm going to go with courage. It's a commitment that says, I know that we may cross into new lands and we may experience battles. But it's also a commitment that says, we will not be deterred because we know our God is with us and goes before us. I feel at this point I, as I was preparing and as you guys were responding an urge to commission some of you even now to step up. You will know who you, who you are. There's going to be a, a sense of just even a provocation from the Holy Spirit says, that's you. That's you. Maybe you've been fearful, a little bit anxious or in previous time. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know where, you, where you're at in your walk with Jesus, you know, and, and how you feel God is using you and calling you. But I feel at this moment in time, there is commission for some of you to step up. And this will feel a commissioning moment for you, a moment of, I want to say, mobilization. Some of you, some of you guys are pioneers here. Some of you are going to be able to boldly go, to pave the way, to not just pioneer, but also to establish. And I feel God will be laying this afresh on your hearts again as well. This pioneering spirit, this kind of excitement, this bubbling of, yeah, that's me. I'm the one. I want to pioneer. I want to press on. I want to pave the way. I want to be part of that. That's me. The result of this might mean new mission steps, mission steps for you personally. You're going to have to take hold of that and think, right, I'm going to step out in courage and faith personally. It also may mean new mission steps for the church. New areas of activities that will come as a result of this. And I just want to say that also as you stand, maybe it's just that re-cementing of your feet that says, I am here I am knitted heart and soul to what God is doing here. Let's finish by just praying together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have called us to be a pioneering and establishing church that will have both local and global impact. God, Let that humble us afresh in light of who you are and what you are doing, but may it also motivate us in mission. God, we love you. We thank you. We are your bride. This is your story. And once again, help us to be faithful and get on board with what you are doing. God, would you lead us? Would you show your favor upon us? And help us to be adventurous in line with your calling over us. And I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.